Dear students, today we will understand some basic concepts about vectors. First of all, we will start with quantity and then gradually we will enter into the core of vectors through quantity. Actually, whatever we can measure in this physical world is a quantity. If I ask you, how much do you love your parents? And in reply, will you say this amount or this amount or this amount? Actually, love cannot be measured. So, we can say that love is not a quantity. Out of all quantities, few require only magnitude for their complete description and few require direction along with magnitude for their complete description. Therefore, considering magnitude and direction, we can divide all quantities into two groups, scalar quantity and vector quantity. The quantities that require magnitude only for their complete description are called scalar quantities. Suppose, if I ask you to tell me your mass, certainly you will not say that your mass is 60 kg west or 70 kg north. You will say that your mass is only 60 kg or only 70 kg. So, what we see here is that to express your mass, only magnitude is needed. Therefore, we can say that mass is a scalar quantity. In mathematics and physics, we will get many quantities like this. Some more examples of scalar quantities are length, speed, work, energy, power, time, electric potential, temperature, and so on. Now, we will learn about vector quantities. Vector quantities require both magnitude and direction for their complete description. Think about distance and displacement. Let us understand with example. Suppose this boy started his journey from this A point and reached here to this B point at a distance of 15 meter. Then from this B point to this C point at a distance of 5 meter and at last from this C point to this D point at a distance of 10 meter. Here AB is a line segment, BC is a line segment and CD is also a line segment. A line segment has magnitude only and the magnitude is the value of its length. So, this 15 meter will be the magnitude for this AB line segment. Similarly, this 5 meter will be the magnitude for this BC line segment and this 10 meter will be the magnitude for this CD line segment. So, what we see here is that from a point to D point is the total length traveled by the boy. To measure length, we do not need to know any direction. We need only its magnitude. For this total length, we get the magnitude, this 15 meter plus this 5 meter plus this 10 meter, that is 30 meter. We measure distance by length. So, we can say that this 30 meter is the total distance covered by the boy. To describe distance completely, we need only its magnitude. So, we can say that distance is a scalar quantity. Many students do not understand displacement. To calculate displacement of an object, we need to know only its initial position and final position. Then, we need the distance between those two positions. The distance will be the displacement of the object. See, this A point is the initial position of the boy. And this D point 
is the final position of the boy. If we add a line segment from this initial point to this final point, then only this portion will be the displacement of the boy. Suppose this distance is 5 meter. So the displacement of the boy will be 5 meter only, not this 30 meter plus this 5 meter. Do you understand now how to calculate displacement? See, this line segment will be the magnitude of displacement and this arrowhead will be its direction. So, we can say that displacement is a vector quantity since to complete describe displacement needed both magnitude and direction. In mathematics and physics, we will get many quantities like this. Some more examples of vector quantities are velocity, acceleration, momentum and so on. Now we will learn the representation of vectors. Geometrically, a vector is represented by an arrow-headed straight line. The length of the straight line represents the magnitude of the quantity and the arrow represents the direction. See, the arrow-headed straight line AB is representing a vector quantity. This length is representing its magnitude and this arrowhead is representing its direction. AB vector is represented by arrow over AB and the magnitude of this vector by either AB or modulus of AB vector. The point A from where the vector AB starts is called the initial point. The another name of this point is tail and the point B where it ends is called the terminal point. The another name of this point is head. See this AB, this P and this A all are the symbols here. These symbols do not mean that they are vectors. We can only call them vectors when we will put arrow over them like this or we will put straight lines over them like this or we will put straight lines under them like this. Among these three methods, we can represent a vector by choosing any one of them. However, we will always try to represent a vector by an arrow over the symbol of the quantity. If we want to express magnitude of a vector, then we can write only its symbol or we can write the symbol inside a modulus by an arrow over it. In a three-dimensional coordinate system, the representation of vectors will be different. Look at this three-dimensional coordinate system. In this system, we get length, width, and height all together. So we get three axes here. This is x-axis, this is y-axis, and this is z-axis. See, these three axes are mutually perpendicular to each other. Look at this angle between x and y axis. This is a 90 degree angle. See this angle is also 90 degree between this y and this z axis. And this angle is also 90 degree between this z axis and this x axis. We represent vector here in this x axis by i cap in this y axis by j cap and in this z axis by k cap. Now look at the graph here. The surface of this graph paper is a plane. A plane has only length and width. So out of three axes x, y and z we get here only this x axis and this y axis. But what about z axis for this plane? We show z axis here like this. 
it doesn't mean that this angle is not a 90 degree angle we have to think this is a 90 degree angle look at here for a vector the value of each square here is i cap that means this square is i cap 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 and this square is also i cap so if we move here to here then at this point we can write 5 i cap similarly at this point we can write 5 j cap and at this point we can write 2k cap thanks a lot again for watching this tutorial